Monday Mojo. This week's quote, power is so characteristically calm that calmness in itself has the aspect of strength. That comes from Robert Bulwer-Lytton, 1831 to 1891, an English statesman and poet. What a laugher. I mean, really. Can you imagine that back in the 60s, there was a study that actually predicted in the future there'd be so much technological advance that people would be able to do just about anything faster. And that would leave them with enormous amounts of free time. People would theoretically have to find new distractions. <laughs> like I said, what a joke. As a matter of fact, time management has become an even bigger problem, if anything. Now, as a real estate coach, I have the opportunity to often lead mastermind groups and hear that the number one issue is time management. Go ahead and poll most people and they'll say the same. They all want more time to spend with their families, friends, on travel, or to just simply sit still. So what's really at play here if technology is doing nothing more than exacerbating the problem? Well, consider the pace of life. Think about how technology has actually accelerated the pace of life to breakneck speed. We get our news in an instant as we look at our cell phone for updates, our stock prices, our weather forecasts, and our sports scores. Even more so with our distracting texts back and forth, devouring our precious time as we banter about mostly useless information. The ability to have that kind of access to the random or seemingly interesting minutiae of life has caused a level of anxiety that never existed before in time. Think about the life of our hunter-gatherer predecessors whose daily concern was to search out a source of food and shelter just to make it through life. They didn't have to wake up and turn on their PDA to check yesterday's stock prices to see if they could retire anytime soon. They didn't swap a piece of the day's hunt to attend a sporting event to take their minds off of the next day's work. Oh, and by the way, they never even considered sitting back and hoping that somebody else would feed them. They knew that nobody was coming each day so that they had to get up and get after. Even in our modern day and age, there are those that still get up early somewhere on a farm and grind it out from sunup to sundown. Sure, maybe now they have cable TV or satellite TV, but I bet you many of them run around outside with their dogs and retire to a fireplace room where they curl up with a good book and go to bed early. But that's so boring, most of us would think. What would I do without my cell phone? My thousands of cable channels? Read? Exercise my mind? Go for a walk and watch the sunset? What about the mall? The shopping? All the things that I want to go and get? See, there you go. That's where we're really wrong. We're hunting and gathering things that we don't need. We're getting locked into a mode of dragging our minds and bodies into a sedentary, non-productive life. And you know what that creates? Anxiety. Why? Because we're born to be productive. We're wired to go to work. We're destined to create. Ask anybody that's out of a job. If they've always been a worker, then they'll be going crazy without that work. I've been looking for a dog for my family lately, and I'm intrigued by the breeding history. You see, a breed never seems to lose its true instinct to work. The Springer Spaniel will chase birds, the Border Collie will herd sheep, and the Bernese Mountain Dog will actually pull carts. Even if they live as family pets, they'll be happier if allowed to do some of their natural work. That workload will actually relax them. They'll feel fulfilled and calm down and become balanced and well-tempered. Why is that any different for us? Are we not wired in a similar way? Maybe the problem is that we jumped way up the food chain ladder and became so sophisticated that we got on up our, our, our upstairs in our heads too much. We became obsessed with happiness and tried to control it by building distractions galore. Anything to take our mind off of good old-fashioned work. It all seems to make sense as I think back to the early stages of my business career where I got so up in my head that I was spinning in circles. I was always plotting and planning how I was going to conquer the world in a half an hour. Now the best advice I received at that time was to work with my hands. That's right, get dirty. 
get out of my head, roll up my sleeves, and make something. I'll never forget going out and getting a bunch of wood and dragging it into my basement in the city and getting after it. You all have gotten a kick out of that one because if you saw the end result, I mean, here it was, this shelf system for our laundry, complete with sagging shelves. But you know what? It did feel good. I felt productive. I knew from that point forward that no matter what happened in life, I'd be just fine. The best part of that effort was that it calmed me down and I began to settle into a less chaotic pace. With my eyes reopened, I started to see the beauty all around me. The mountains seemed taller and more magnificent, the sunsets more dramatic and colorful, and the beaches in rolling surf more rhythmic and strong. Completely energizing. You see, we're just steps away from reconnecting to what's important. And I'm sure there's not one of us that will argue that what we want most is a peaceful life. A life where we feel a confidence that comes from knowing that we're able to take care of ourselves. So the best way to get started is to calm down and then carry on. Hey, this is Danny Griffin with another version of Monday Mojo brought to you by FreethinkingTools.com. Reminding you, think and thrive. See you next time.